Hey everyone, Kevin here once again with my one, two, three cents. Thanks for following along the video a day in the month of May. Those of you who have stuck it out and watched all the videos so far, uh, this is day, what is it, May 11th, so day 11 of this challenge that I've kind of imposed on myself, but I appreciate you checking it out. Today I want to talk about, though, the, um, the whole idea, the whole concept of the WWE brand extension. Um, this was a topic that we kind of touched on on From the Raptors Radio last night. Um, if you want to learn more about From the Raptors Radio, go to uh, my123cents.com and click on the FTR Radio uh, tab at the top um, or go to aapwrestling.com and do the same thing. But uh, we, we touched on it briefly and it's a, a subject that I've wanted to talk about for quite some time now, so I'm going to spend a few minutes and just kind of give my views and my opinions on that, my one, two, three cents, if you will. Um, you know, the original concept, the original idea back in 2002, I think, is when it was implemented, and you had a Raw show and a SmackDown show, and you had respective champions on each show, tag team champions, world champion or WWE champion. Uh, there were two separate women's champions at that uh, I'm not sure if initially it was like that, but eventually you had a Divas champion and a women's champion. And, you know, the U.S. title and the Intercontinental title were on separate shows. And it just made more sense. And had they followed that formula, you know, they kept the pay-per-view separate. Um, the big four, they kind of had matches from both, uh, both brands on there. Um, I think to take it a, a step further, I would have almost gone with it where... Raw was its own company and SmackDown was its own company and not intermix anything and keep it as almost as a as a competition and, and keep it competitive, you know, having two different uh, general managers, two different announced teams too. Um I think would have been would have, would have been nice to kind of sell that a little bit more for me as a fan. Um and then in recent years, you know, we've kind of seen the pay-per-views all become one big meld and, you know, everybody wrestles from Raw and SmackDown and sometimes you have inner, I don't want to say inner promotional, but inner uh, show matches, if you will. And again, it's not a, it's not my idea of a brand extension of separating it because I think it would have also made the product a little better because the WWE clearly is lacking that competition as much as TNA wants to be number two, and they are technically, I guess, number two. They're not anywhere near number two, whereas WCW and WWE were going back and forth uh, as far as the competitiveness goes. So now that you know, back in I think it was August or September, Triple H came out and announced the Raw Super Show and the SmackDown Super Show, and they were one and you know stars from each show would be appearing on the other to me it has rendered the whole concept the whole idea of two separate uh world champions um kind of useless you know why do we have Sheamus and CM Punk both holding i say world title WWE title uh, IE world title in this situation um that you know they're the two top championship belts in the company um, you know, I think now is the time to make one champion, merge this and, and make it one thing because now John Laurinaitis is the general manager of both shows. Michael Cole has been doing commentary and play by play on both shows. There's United Tag Team Champ or Unified Tag Team Champions. There's one women's champion now. So go ahead now, let's just end this whole farce of a brand extension and make one champion. Um and I, you know, I'd almost, I, I hate to say it because I'm not a big fan of Coles, but make it one announced team. I mean, if, I don't know, I, this whole, or you don't necessarily have to make one announced team, I guess, but making all your champions. And then that way, you know, maybe we can cycle in some new competitors. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how to go from it from there, but, you know, my ideal dream match, and I don't know if dream match is the right word, but my ideal scenario for WrestleMania and leading up to that was going to be um, Punk defending the uh, WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble, beating Dolph Ziggler there. Then, you know, they said anybody could show up in the Royal Rumble match. Punk goes into the Royal Rumble match and wins the Royal Rumble and then goes on to challenge Daniel Bryan, who was the world champion at the time, at WrestleMania. Then you had Bryan versus Punk at WrestleMania to merge the titles. That's how I would have done that. 
obviously I'm not a booker and I have this, you know, armchair booking, uh, just a fan and a mark in some people's eyes. So that obviously didn't happen. Now, you know, it could happen, you know, eventually where we, we do get the one championship, you know, Jericho dropping hints that uh, the end of the world is coming. Of course, he hasn't really said that lately. Um, don't know if there's something cryptic there that, that may be what's coming down the, the pike. Um, but, you know, I'm just not a fan of this so-called brand extension when you've got now SmackDown guys wrestling on Raw every week and Raw guys wrestling on SmackDown. I thought this was a temporary thing that Triple H had set up back uh, in the fall, but it's gone on now for almost nine months, I guess now, or ten months, however long it's been. So uh, it is time for there to be one champion, in my opinion, uh, one heavyweight champion, one world, and I would do the world championship. You know, to me, that belt looks nicer. It has more prestige to it. It is the world champion. Um, and then, you know, you can still have your secondary titles being the intercontinental title and being the um, the United States title. Because look back at old school WCW, NWA, you know, you had an NWA heavyweight champion, you had an NWA TV champion, you had the U.S. champion, uh, we had the Mid-Atlantic title that was defended there, the the, um, uh, the Western States Heritage Championship belt uh, was briefly on there as well. So I, I think it's it, it could be a concept that can be done. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, will it hurt? hurt the product overall or not to have one champion because let's face it folks the championship belt and this is probably going to be a, a post for another day but I'll I'll briefly plant that seed right now the championship belts uh, at least in my view and a lot of views especially from the uh, from the rafters radio group is the belts are, are props at this point uh, when's the last time the world title or the WWE championship was defended in the main event the last match of the night at a pay-per-view well, I can tell you right now it hasn't happened in 2012 so far uh, we are five months into the year this will be the fifth pay-per-view coming up at over the limit we don't know what's going to happen for the main event there yet, but so far it has not happened. Royal Rumble match was the main event at the Royal Rumble. Um, in February at No Way Out, it was the ambulance match with Cena and Kane. WrestleMania was Cena versus Rock. And last month at uh, Extreme Rules, it was uh, Brock Lesnar and John Cena. So where are we going from here for the titles as far as they go? Um, I want to hear your opinions and thoughts on this brand extension. Should it be one show? Uh, you know, on Friday nights and Monday nights with one champion. Um, weigh in here. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching my one, two, three, seven. <laughs>